Hey there. Anyone that records a podcast and does interviews knows that there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes before the interview even begins and you hit record. You need to communicate with the guest and get their headshot, their bio, figure out what the topic is. You need to let them know how to connect with you for the recording and, you know, give them instructions. And there can be so much back and forth or maybe you're even paying a VA to get that done, inevitably something will fall through the cracks and get forgotten. And so today I want to share with you what I do to automate the process, save time and money, and allow your guest to show up prepared and wowing your audience. So let's get started. So as I said, there are a lot of things to prepare before you, you know, hit the record button and your guest shows up on your Zoom call. You, you want to know their bio, their headshot. You need to give them instructions. And every show is a little bit different, right, on what instructions you need to, to share. And what you do want is to save time. I mean, we're all time starved. You want to make sure that nothing slips through the cracks and that the guest, you know, misses out on the interview or feels confused or frustrated, or maybe they show up not ready to, to be on video or their background is like a hot mess and they didn't realize that it was going to be a video Or maybe they're a new podcaster and they don't even have a proper mic at. So you want to dot those I's and cross those T's and make sure that all of that is mitigated and you have the best possible recording for your podcast. And you want to make sure too that the guest is having a great experience, that they're feeling that you're super organized, that they know exactly what is expected of them that all of their questions are being answered and that it's a smooth process for them. And you want to save money. If you don't want to, you know, pay a VA to do all those little tiny moving pieces, you can actually automate the whole entire piece. So let me step you through it one piece at a time. So the one crucial item that you will need, of course, is a calendar or a scheduler. So there is Acuity or Time Trade or Schedule Once, or I use Calendly. The key though is that yes, you want to use it to make it easier for the guest to book the right time slot on your show that's convenient for you. But you want to make sure that the scheduler also has some automation features. So the first thing that you want to do when you have a scheduler is create that form that they fill out to book the call. So for mine, when I have a guest book on my show, I obviously have it branded um, for my show and my company. And I also make sure that all the form fields are covering all the information that I need. So obviously their name and their email and their phone number in case you need to text them or get a hold of them and some emergency comes up. It does happen sometimes. But you also want to make sure that you have their bio so that you can learn about them or if they're considered a content marketing expert or Facebook ad expert, kind of like what that um, title is that they want to be referred to on the interview. For me as well, I can get the headshot. People can actually um, upload images or give a link to the image on those forms. So a lot of people don't actually realize that part. I also want to get the social media links so that I have those easily on the show page and I don't have to hunt it down, go to their website, click a bunch of links and record it. It all takes time. And also while I'm at it, I want to make sure that I am connecting with that guest on those platforms. And then when the episode goes live, you'll want to use that so that you can tag the guest and tap into their audience as well. Now, I also ask in that form on Calendly, 
what their interview topic is. I mean, typically I do communicate that, you know, when they're pitching or when I'm reaching out on Podmatch or, you know, messaging with them on LinkedIn, I kind of get a feel for what, you know, title or topic that I want to discuss anyways, but it's always good to kind of cover your bets. And I do love when they supply interview questions. Yes, I do my own research, but I find it really helpful for me to have a guideline because if I'm interviewing someone on say Google analytics, and there's a lot of techie stuff that I don't know the right lingo, or I don't know the back end or whatever it may be. I want to make sure that they're providing me with the information so that I can make best use of their time on the podcast and cover topics and questions to make them look really good and also to be able to give the information that's going to be helpful to the audience. So you can ask up front what those interview questions could be. I even go as far as asking them, hey, will you be willing to share the episode on email or social once the episode goes live? And it just shows that there's that level of integrity and an expectation that they will share it, that they're not being on the show just for their own purposes, that they want to share it and help more people. So build that in to your scheduler form. And then you naturally afterwards get a notification and then you can, you know, just grab that information and run. And I'll kind of go into the process in a second here. So next I want to cover the automation part. What happens after they book the interview with you? So Calendly and many other schedulers, of course, automate those email confirmations. Some even provide text and also automate the email reminders that go out. So you want to make sure that they're being reminded, you know, the day before the morning of an hour before, um, just to make sure that, you know, they know what's coming up because we're also busy. We're in our inboxes. We're doing tasks. You know, they may not be referring to their calendar right then and there. So you can have that whole process automated so that you don't have to, you know, have a VA write out those emails and email them out at the appropriate times. It saves so much time and money. Now in those um, email reminders and the confirmation, you're going to want to include the instructions and the information that they're going to need to make this a successful episode. So you can customize it. You can even share a web page that has all of that information already laid out. Now, what I recommend including is having obviously the Zoom information or a Zencaster link, whatever it may be, however they connect with you to do that recording. You also want to let them know up front if it is going to be recorded in video and audio so that they are prepared. And if you're, you know, very particular about what's on in the background, or maybe you want to give them, you know, some lighting tips, um, you know, colors that you wear, make sure that your um, camera is HD or that your microphone um, you know, is up to snuff, so to speak, or you're wearing a headset or whatever the equipment is that you desire to make sure that you're getting really good sound quality. And if you're recording the video that it is, you know, up to par according to your branding and the image that you want to portray. You also want to let them know how long the interview is. I mean, hopefully they did their research and listened to a bunch of your episodes, But it is good to be up front and say, hey, it's a, you know, 20 to 30 minute interview. You know, we'll chit chat a bit before and afterwards, you know, give yourself 45 minutes. And then that way, time wise, they're not feeling rushed or not caught off guard. You may also need to let them know the format. So everyone has a different kind of podcast. Some people give like a a speed round kind of thing at the end um, and ask a specific amount of questions and, or some people, you know, 
have a few questions that they ask in their, in every single episode. So you want to give those guests that information up front to make sure that they are prepared. And even if there's like a, a commercial halfway through, just say, letting you know up front, halfway through, we'll pause and, and so on, just so that they can kind of wrap their head around what that experience is going to be like. I mean, sure, you're going to, you know, kind of go over those housekeeping things um, in the green room, you know, before you hit the record button, but it's always good to kind of give that information up front. And um, some schedulers actually even have follow-up sequences that you can automate. So you can have, you know, thank you email or like, you know, just asking them to review the show or whatever it may be, whatever the next step is for you. Make sure that they're following you on social. (laughs) Um, So now that you've got the form set, you've got the confirmation and the reminder emails all set up and automated, you want to make sure as well that you have a process to go through. So once uh, a guest is booked on my show, then a team member takes that information and puts it on a show notes Google document. So their bio, their social links, their, um, their website, any of the questions that um, they think would be useful for me to ask during the interview. And that way we are prepared and obviously upload the headshot to Canva so it's ready. Upload the headshot to the Google folder. So that way all those little items are being ticked off as we go and it's a process. So it just happens like clockwork. I even have a script sheet so that I pull in the bio, um, you know, if, if they've written any books or if they have their own podcast, then I make sure to have that on there. And I also put the interview questions and then I do my own due diligence and my own research and come up with, you know, questions and topics and things that I think would be good to discuss. And then I'm prepared and ready for the interview, which is super helpful. And obviously, I make sure that I am connecting with the guests on social media. Now, with the process, once the show goes live, it's really good to have some email templates that are ready to go just so you can slot in like the links, the pictures, maybe you provide audiograms. For me, I have a whole entire, you know, Google Doc that has quotes, the social media, the images, the video snippets, so they can use as much as as I provide. You can even send out an email a week before the show goes live and just giving them the heads up that, hey, your show's going live in a week. And that way they know, okay, you know, I'm going to need to send out emails or do some social media posts with whatever I provide. But they just prepare their team and be super organized. Or maybe when the show was over, you send out a thank you email or a gift or a card. So just think about the process and the things that need to happen after the show goes live and just make sure that is factored in when you're plugging in your or setting up your project management system. Again, whether you're using Asana, Teamworks or whatever, it's just really great to have those tasks set up as a template. So again, you're just running like clockwork. You're not having to think about it. It's going to prompt you. Nothing's going to slip through the cracks. You're going to, it's all going to be a smooth process. And you're, again, your guest is showing up prepared. They know that you're organized, that you know what you're doing. You're saving so much time. Yes, there's a bit of setup in the beginning, but once it's set up, you're done. So super easy. So that way you can automate your guest, you know, intake process and you are super organized and ready to go and be your best in front of the camera when you interview your next guest. So uh, get organized and uh, enjoy your podcast hosting experience. See ya.